I think it'll be a very solemn occasion, but we feel very privileged that um, we're able to be here and um, be part of the um, procession and see everything. Oh my goodness, it's been amazing. Everybody is just on a high, to be honest. As much as it's a funeral, it's bittersweet. Everyone's come together and really shown so much respect. And yeah, it's <laughs> just been crazy, to be honest. At precisely 10.44 a.m., Majesty's Coffin will travel from the Palace of Westminster to Westminster Abbey. And at 11 a.m., the eyes of the world will watch on for the final farewell. Following the state funeral service at around midday, the procession through London will commence. From Westminster Abbey, along Whitehall to Horse Guards Parade, along the Mall, where well-wishers are already camping out, and past Buckingham Palace to Wellington Arch. There, the coffin will be transferred from gun carriage to the state hearse. As they leave, the national anthem will be played, the journey then through the streets of West London and every inch of the 20 miles or so to Windsor expected to be lined with thousands upon thousands. And just after 3 p.m., the procession will enter the long walk, destined for St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. As part of our planning, we have thought about a whole range of potential scenarios. That includes you know, crowds and the numbers that it will be, it will be attending, of course crime, and clearly considering any threat of any terrorist attack and our policing response, not just by us as the Met Police, but us working with so many other agencies and partners, is absolutely key to ensuring this is a safe and secure environment. The coffin arrived at the Abbey for a funeral decades in the planning. With the Buckingham Palace card, now the residence of the King, it read, in loving, and devoted memory. The hymns and the readings were all in line with the Queen's wishes. marked their moment to turn and stand vigil for their granny. Difficult to watch at times. William, Harry and their cousin Peter Phillips have already faced the public gaze, walking behind the coffin. Siamo al Buckingham Palace, vediamo se riusciamo a mostrarvelo in diretta. Eccolo qua, Buckingham Palace, vediamo se non sbaglio la bandiera, eccola qui, a mezz'asta, è morta la regina Elisabetta II. Oh, I'm sorry, we, Arthur, we, we have to pause for a moment here. Uh, stay with us, we have got some breaking news. Uh, Sandra? The king has, the queen has passed away. The queen died peacefully, the royal family says, at Balmoral this afternoon. The king and the queen consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. Queen Elizabeth II has died at the age of 96. John, uh, her health in just recent weeks and months um, obviously was called into question. 
Il est 20h ici à Paris, une heure de moins à Londres. Bonsoir à tous, vous êtes toujours sur France 24. Bienvenue à tous pour la suite de cette édition spéciale. C'est une page de l'histoire du Royaume-Uni, du Commonwealth et du monde qui se tourne ce soir. La reine Elisabeth II est morte à l'âge de 96 ans, dont 70 ans de règne. Bonne Abend, meine Damen und Herren, ich begrüße Sie zur Tagesschau. Königin Elisabeth II. ist tot. Das teilte der Buckingham Palast in London mit. Die britische Monarchin starb im Alter von 96 Jahren auf ihrem Sommersitz Schloss Balmoral in Schottland. Ihre engsten Familienangehörigen waren bei ihr. Die Queen aus dem Hause Windsor hatte erst vor kurzem ihr 70. Thronjubiläum gefeiert. Ihre Herrschaftszeit ist damit eine der... Knowing how much the Queen adored her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren, I'm sure that accommodations have been made for all of them in her world, including Harry and Meghan and Archie and Lilibet. I mean, the, one of the Queen's great regrets was that she didn't get to see more of Archie and Lilibet, but I'm sure pieces of jewellery, special mementos will absolutely have been reserved for those great grandchildren too. So what's going to happen to the royal estates? Well, the two properties that the Queen did own are Balmoral and Sandringham. Both estates handed to her from her father, King George VI. Of course, Balmoral was where the Queen died. It was one of her favourite residences. She used to spend every summer there. Charles has a Scottish residence. It's called Burke Hall. It's not far from Balmoral. And that is his bolt hole. And there has been talk and speculation that he may open up Balmoral to the public in the way that he has done with Dumfries House, which is also in Scotland. There's a possibility he might do the same with Highgrove, his own private residence, where the gardens are open to the public. Sandringham, he's turned into the most wonderful example of organic farming. It's already open to the public. Prince William has inherited $921 million, and, and that, of course, merges with the estate that he inherited from his Diana. That's £17 million from his late mother. So, in his own right, Prince William is now a very financially wealthy, independent young man. So, whereas he was supported by his father in his official work, He's now got his own pot of gold to finance his and his wife's official work. He will now be paying for his own official life. We are likely never going to know the, the details of the Queen's will because it will remain confidential. Who's going to look after the corgis? Well, she has two, Sandy and Muick. Muick is named after one of her favourite rivers in Scotland. The corgis have actually already been given to Prince Andrew. He spent a lot of time with the Queen in the last months. I think he was one of the few who the corgis didn't try and bite. And um, he, he seemed to have a good rapport with them. So it was the Queen's wish that um, Sandy and Muick went to Andrew. 70 across the capital, across the nation. Silence. A moment to reflect for the people and their new king. He has issued this statement on the eve of his mother's funeral. As we all prepare to say our last farewell, he said, I wanted simply to take this opportunity to say thank you to all those countless people who've been such a support and comfort to my family. I speak to you today with feelings of profound sorrow. Throughout her life, Her Majesty the Queen, my beloved mother, was an inspiration and example to me and to all my family. And we owe her the most heartfelt debt any family could owe to their mother. As King, he will do things differently. It's a very different job. But I think we'll still see those, those same instincts, that same desire to want to uh, use his role appropriately but to use his role in a way which makes a difference to, to this country, makes a difference in the Commonwealth, uh, and, and does, uh, does a service. Finds the gap on the offside and that'll be enough. 